people who understand Beethoven don't play Beethoven. What do I mean by that? It sounds a bit odd on the surface because a lot of people will proclaim to understand a thing because they study the thing. And that seems to make sense. I mean, that's the academic narrative. That's what we're told. You know, if you have professors in a university, they're spending their entire careers studying that topic. So don't they understand that thing? Don't they understand that topic? I mean, especially if they're giving lectures to students, the students are paying good money to be there and they want to hear someone lecture about a given topic. Presumably that person standing in, in the front there, in front of the chalkboard, giving that lecture understands the material, right? Um, any profession, whether it's academia, industry, anywhere, you know, if someone says they understand something, they're charging you because presumably they understand something. A lot of times they're saying that because they study it. They spend time reading the material. They spend time uh, learning the jargon, learning the words, and effectively being able to essentially replicate the thing that you see on the surface. And because they spend so much time with the material, with the content, then they're telling you that they understand something. A lot of people do this personally and professionally. They will proclaim to understand something because they study it. If it's in health, then someone might confidently proclaim to understand a particular disease because they study it extensively, maybe in textbooks or lectures, right? Uh, if it's politics, people are going to claim to understand the complexities of international relations, let's say, because they studied theories and historical events. Uh, anything in philosophy, you might have individuals who enjoy reading philosophy and then proclaim to understand, either directly or indirectly, complex philosophical concepts because they studied various texts and theories. You know, people who like to name drop, for example, right? You can, you can kind of tell, let's say, if someone's well-read because they keep dropping author names or maybe the classics, the greats, whatever. Economics and economists might confidently assert that understanding economic principles and market behavior that they do understand that because they study mathematical models and economic theories and they can drop the names and they can do the jargon that goes along with it. Think about studying a foreign language. Somebody might study a foreign language diligently, maybe even at the academic level, and therefore claim to understand it well. Health, politics, philosophy, economics, languages, whatever. Doesn't matter what it is. Many people will proclaim to understand something because they study it. But I'm going to argue that you cannot know a thing by studying the thing. You have to create the thing. Okay? So, to understand something, just by definition, is to comprehend or grasp its meaning, its uh, significance, its nature, right? Kind of the essence of the thing. So, if you're thinking about, I don't know, learning dancing, if you understand dance, it wouldn't be merely mimicking the steps it would be comprehending the meaning and the significance within the cultural context, right? If it's a Spanish dance or if it's a waltz or whatever it is. There's all this cultural context and, and uh, you know, settings that go into to put meaning onto this type of dance style, let's say. It wouldn't be just following the steps. If you want to understand the concept of multiplication in mathematics, it would be comprehending how it represents repeated addition or scaling of quantities. It wouldn't be, I know how to multiply to get the answer. That's not understanding. If you want to understand Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, that would be to grasp the nature of the artwork as a masterpiece of the Renaissance period and what that means. Uh, appreciating composition or the techniques that were involved to produce it. The enig enigmatic expression of the subject itself, right? As well as considering the cultural, again, and historical context, right? The artistic innovation, the enduring influence on the art world and all that kind of stuff. Now, that still sounds like, well, maybe you could kind of get that just from reading. No, I don't think you can. A thing's meaning must come from context, right? So take the word, simple example, take the word bank, okay? What does that mean? Well, in the context of finance, bank obviously means a financial institution where people deposit money. In the context of geography, the word bank would refer to land alongside a river or stream. If it was, uh, I don't know, the context of vehicle maneuvers, then the word bank would mean something like turning motion or maybe a curve in the road. In computing, the word bank would be a collection of similar elements that you're storing, like a memory bank or a data bank. So a thing's meaning has to come from context, right? But for context to exist, there must be a set of circumstances and conditions that provide the setting by which something is imbued with meaning. 
you take a common kind of idiom or expression in the English language, something like, it's raining cats and dogs. Well, without the context of English language and culture, then someone unfamiliar with that phrase could either interpret it literally and look at you bewildered or just simply not get what the heck you're saying. Maybe they think you're a little crazy, right? The set of circumstances and conditions that provide the setting for the phrase, it's raining cats and dogs, or a number of things. There's a language itself, right? The phrase is in English and the meaning is understood within the linguistic framework of idiomatic expressions. There's cultural knowledge, right? The understanding of idiomatic expressions is part of cultural knowledge itself. And then people within that culture are therefore going to be familiar with the figurative meanings of the phrase. Um, the literal meaning of cats and dogs doesn't make sense in the context of weather. So there's weather context here. But the idiom is used to describe something like heavy rain. And that's a common phenomenon in many regions. And then there's just the common usage. So the phrase has been used and understood within the English-speaking community for a long time. And that tends to reinforce its meaning through common usage and familiarity. So I said, to understand something is to comprehend or grasp its meaning, right? It's significant or nature, significance or nature. And a thing's meaning has to come from context. But for context to exist, there has to be a set of circumstances and conditions that provide the setting by which something is imbued with meaning. Well, the circumstances and conditions that give a thing meaning only exist, I would argue, at the time of creation. You cannot know Napoleon by reading Napoleon. You'd have to go to war. You cannot know Picasso by inspecting his paintings. You have to paint. More to the point, you cannot know about military strategy by reading about military strategy. You cannot know about art in general by reading about art. The deep patterns that make a thing what they are are not apparent in the thing itself by just inspecting it, by looking at it, or even trying to replicate it. They are present in the struggle to create the thing. We cannot know a thing by studying the thing. We have to do the thing. The action, the struggle, moving through the environment, bringing resources together to create a lower entropy construct that you call whatever, your piece of art, your piece of writing, your podcast episode, whatever it is you're making. You have to go through that process to understand that thing. You want to read all about people making podcasts. You want to research all the people that do it. That's not going to tell you what it means to make a podcast. You got to make a podcast. You got to struggle through it. You got to sound a little bit stupid a few times until you don't sound stupid. You got to think about how to structure your arguments. You got to think about how to project your voice and deliver whatever, how, whatever your style is, do the interview with someone. You got to go through that. You got to make the mistakes. You got to immerse yourself in the mess of that to understand what it means to make a podcast, to make a piece of art, to produce a, a piece of writing, write an essay, do a book, whatever it is, play a piece of music. You cannot know a thing by studying the thing. You have to create the thing. That's where the context is. That's where the setting is. That's where all those pieces of information that you blend together, that's where the learning comes from. Playing Beethoven in this example per the title of this episode, is replicating what you see in front of you. It's not creating the thing you see in front of you. If you sit down at the piano and you play Beethoven, or you get academic about it and you study the notation and you study all the different works and you look for common underlying you know, patterns, commonalities between them, and you start to place things into categories and you really think you understand the essence of Beethoven, but you've never actually composed a piece of music, you don't understand Beethoven. Beethoven wasn't studying Beethoven. Beethoven was composing music. <laughs> you can't understand a person, place, or thing unless you yourself have created something within that same field or category or area or place. You have to have gone through the struggle. That's what it means to understand something. Those who don't create don't understand. Go back to that health example. Someone might, like I said in the beginning, confidently proclaim to understand a particular disease after studying it extensively in textbooks and lectures or whatever. You know, this could be a professor, or this could be a medical doctor, even. This could be a medical student. This could be your average Joe, someone who blogs about healthcare. 
but they may not have any practical experience in either treating patients or going through the disease themselves, or more to the point, having created a solution within that space. You know, some people in health have gone through serious circumstances and have created solutions for themselves. Maybe they got their diet under control, their, their exercise, whatever, and they created the solution for themselves. They, they've gone through that struggle. That's someone who understands that particular area of health. Of course, not perfectly, right? But that's someone who really has an understanding. I, I said, politically, many claim to understand the complexities of international relations or any, any area of politics, right? They'll study the theories, uh, you know, historical events, or even just kind of reading the newspaper maybe every day. But if they'd ever worked in diplomacy or experienced the nuances of global politics firsthand, or again, more specifically, created some kind of solution in that space, then what do they understand? They can replicate the jargon. They can kind of speak as though they know what they're talking about, but of course they don't. You have to struggle through the context to have the understanding. Individuals who enjoy reading philosophy, they might try to wax philosophical and act as though they understand complex philosophical concepts, right? They've read the text. They know some of the theories that can do the name dropping, even though they may not have engaged in philosophical debates or applied those concepts to their real life. Again, creating something, creating an argument, battle testing that argument, creating your own philosophy and living it within real life scenarios. An economist might confidently assert that understanding the economic principles and market behavior is their thing because they've got maybe mathematical models they can refer to. They've got you know, economic theories, maybe some more name dropping in there, but despite not having practical experience in the financial sector, maybe, or observing, you know, or competing within market fluctuations over time, developing some kind of solution, even just for themselves, you know, uh, languages, right? You can, you can, you think about how a language is something that, that we all learn without using dictionaries, right? Without referring to words. We just immerse ourselves in environments and it precipitates out, you know, but you can get kind of academic about language, obviously. You can study languages and understand their patterns and their syntax and the grammar and all this. So those who study a foreign language might claim to understand it well, but what is their actual ability to communicate it effectively in real life situations? Now, maybe they have both. That's great. But it's the real-life situation that gives them the understanding, not the academic investigation into the layers and these man-made precisions that we put around language like grammar and syntax, which are not really anything to do with nature. These are just the way that we demarcate a phenomenon so we can talk about it. Right? A lot of people will be limited in their ability to actually interact with that language in a real-world setting. Lack of aversion, lack of practice, lack of conversational settings you got to create something. Create your own situation. Create your own solution. And, and even better yet, create something, let's say, tangible as the thing that you are putting together so that that tangible thing can be put into real environments and it can fail and you can get informed by the world, informed by nature, coax out the information that imbues something with actual meaning. Those who don't create don't understand. And here's the, an important point to make. It doesn't matter what you create, just that you are creating. So to be clear, it's not about creating the same thing. If I say people who understand Beethoven don't play Beethoven, you know, because they need to be creating music, they need to be composing. It doesn't mean you, know, you, you need to compose piano music that sounds like Beethoven. In fact, you don't even necessarily need to be composing piano music. But if you want to know something about the journey of Beethoven, something about what it means to struggle through and create something like music, you have to create your own thing. There are deep universal patterns at the heart of all things that we create. You don't have to compose Beethoven sounding music to understand Beethoven. You don't need to paint in the style of Picasso to understand Picasso. You don't need to derive Einstein's equations to understand relativity. You need to take your own journey to create something. Your own journey. Now, there might be all kinds of overlap after you do take your own journey. You end up immersing yourself in a lot of the mathematics that Einstein had as well. You end up producing music that maybe does kind of sound like Beethoven. But the point is you have to struggle with your own journey to create something. So I said, 
Many people proclaim to understand something because they study it, health, philosophy, economics, language, all kinds of examples. They're studying it. They're reading the textbooks. They're going to the lectures. They're name dropping. They seem to understand the world of that thing. But then I said, you cannot know a thing by studying the thing. You have to create the thing. You have to understand, to understand something is to comprehend or grasp its meaning and significance. And they, you know, it's nature. We get that. But a thing's meaning has to come from context. And for context to exist, there must be a set of circumstances and conditions that provide the setting by which something is imbued with meaning. The circumstances and conditions that give a thing meaning only exist at the time of creation. We cannot know a thing by studying the thing. We have to do the thing. If you want to study Beethoven as well, fine. If you want to know relativity, yeah, probably purview some of Einstein's equations and see what's been done, but none of that is going to matter if you don't create your own. If you go to play Beethoven, you are replicating what you see in front of you. You're not creating the thing that's in front of you. You're not going to understand much of anything if you don't take a journey yourself to produce your own thing. Those who don't create don't understand. If you haven't gone through some physical experience and come up and created your own solution, you don't understand that area of health or politics, or philosophy, or economics, or language, or whatever. It doesn't matter really what you're creating, but you have to be creating to understand something. So I call this episode, People Who Understand Beethoven Don't Play Beethoven. And I think we see a lot of that in today's world. It's very much the academic narrative, as though just studying something is going to give you an understanding or an appreciation at a deep level of, of what is actually there. And it won't. Because what makes a thing a thing is not contained within the thing, <laughs> right? What makes a thing a thing is the journey that led to the thing. That's what it means. That's where the understanding comes from. So don't get enamored with studying and reading the works of others. Of course you can still do that. It's great for motivation. It's great to know that things are possible. I encourage you to do this. But that is not the same as understanding. And I think academics get this very wrong, this notion that we can just go to school and listen to someone give a, a lecture as though that individual has an understanding. And even if they did have an understanding, just consuming it as a student is not the same as understanding the material. All you're doing is replicating. You're imitating. You're following the steps you are told to follow. You have to build. You have to create something. You have to struggle. You have to fail. You don't understand Beethoven or anything by playing Beethoven or by reading about Beethoven. Yes, you can do those things as well. Yes, they might help, uh, you know, make it fun or keep you motivated. But that is not understanding. You have to compose your own music. You have to come up with your own math. You have to come up with your own theory, your own model. You have to write your own book, make your own podcast. Most of these things are not going to apply to you, but some of them will. And those are the things you have to build. You have to build to understand. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, take care.